Good morning, friends. It is seed starting Saturday with your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler. And um kind of glad you're dropping in here today because I have a dilemma, which we will talk about here shortly. And um, we are just having so many new people join us each week that I thought I would just kind of give an overview really quickly for those of you that may not be familiar with the Gardener's Workshop. So my um, little business began back in 1998 and it started out as Ziegler Garden because um, I was a flower, I was a budding flower farmer. I knew nothing about, um, although I worked in a business as a business manager, I didn't really know about starting my own business. And I didn't understand about the importance of the name of your business back then. And um, anyway, so I launched my business in 1998. I'm an urban, I was an urban garden back then in the middle of the city. I had less than two quarter acre gardens that I put into production and like became an overnight hit success in growing cut flowers and just kind of expanded and grew my business and then began teaching, found that was my greatest gift. Um, and it's just kind of mushroomed from there. Um, so it in 2005, the name was changed from Ziegler Garden to the Gardener's Workshop, and here we are. We have an online um, platform that supports a ton of education. It has an online garden shop where we sell most of the things you hear me mention from time to time or show, seeds, tools, supplies, my books, online courses, all that kind of stuff. And um, so about three years, so for, this is my 25th year. So up till about three years ago, we were in what we called high production. We were producing 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers a week from a garden. I have no structures because I'm in the city. I'm selling to 23 florists, two supermarket chains. Let's see, a bouquet subscription. We sold at farmer's markets and we have an on-farm members only market back then. Anyway, three years ago, we started to evolve that where we now grow pride and tucker's eating things already friends um stinker the minute i hit the live button how does he know right dogs are so much smarter than we give them credit for so anyway about three years ago we started moving away from actually selling our flowers because all of our flowers go to supporting our educational platform our online shop meaning the photos, videos, and all that kind of stuff. So I still grow a boatload of flowers, which is part of my confession and part of my crisis going on here this morning that we're going to talk about. So if you want to learn more about the work that we're doing, you can find out um, everything kind of is home-based at thegardenersworkshop.com. We have two podcasts, The Field and Garden, um, which is usually me talking about what's going on here on the farm and business things. Then we have a second podcast called Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Lane is our seed manager um, and she does a beautiful slideshow for each podcast. And um, anyway, so we have those two um, as well as we have a blog and just a ton of, we have a digital catalog. We have an online shop. There's a ton of stuff over there. So fall in and have fun. And thank you all so much for joining me here today. And so let's see, what are the things that I want to, oh, so I want to be sure to tell you that we also have a phone app um, and in our phone app, which is totally free, y'all, you just have to download it on your phone. And when you get it, you have access to all of our past live shows of me going through stuff. If you look at last year's shows, I'm going through all the harvest, which is what we're getting ready to head into now. So you definitely want to have our app. When we do the flowers, that means that you can go to each seed and watch the little clip of where I showed the harvest and talked about it a little bit. Um, but so I do a live show in that app on Wednesdays and Fridays and the Friday specials um, are good until 8 a.m. on Sunday morning that we did that. So I could offer that to you guys used to be Saturday morning ended. Um, but yesterday we had a special on the soul blocking kit. We also had our tote bag and t-shirt. Um, have y'all seen the t-shirt? I don't think I've ever shown y'all this. I'm sitting in my stage area. Look at this t This is the back of our t-shirt. It says the Flower Farm Crew. So this is Babs, my golden from several years ago. Those are my legs. These are Flower Farmer legs, y'all. My legs, Kelly's, Bobo's, and Suzanne's. Anyway, 
We had a special bundle, 20 bucks for the tote and the t-shirt. What a deal. Anyway, that's good until Sunday at 8 a.m. So we meet here each week and usually talk about, you know, the seed starting, which I'm going to do my sunflowers again this morning. We'll talk about that, doing some early birds. But I just want to talk about the crisis that's going on here that I just want everybody to know, because we hear this from people all the time that they think it's because they're new or they haven't done it very long or they don't have enough space. Y'all, this is still happening to me. I'm 25 years in. I have a big building um, and it's still a crisis. I literally am running out of grow light real estate. That means space underneath my grow lights. And the big reason for this problem, daggone it, is the weather. So, I can usually, if I, if it's all about the early bird sunflowers is why I'm sharing this with you today. So we started starting sunflowers, right? Weeks earlier than we normally do because we've learned that sunflower transplants planted out in the garden, hooped and row covered, will take far colder temperatures than we ever dreamed they would. And they'll grow, meaning we get sunflower blooms weeks and weeks earlier. And because sunflowers are a huge cash crop to flower farmers. Um, I mean, you know, reminder again, one year of my 1,200 a week sunflowers bought me a $31,000 John Deere tractor and implements. So it's big business, right? So we started starting those sunflowers um, every week. Well, I do that thinking, okay, you know, it'll probably, it, as in normal Virginia fashion, the days will start getting warmer. So I'll be able to carry those trays from the grow, from indoors out to be on the porch, out on the open porch all day in the bright sunshine and keep on growing. It'll be warm enough. Well, after that three week teaser of having like spring conditions here in Virginia, we dropped back to winter last week. I mean, we were 24 degrees on one of my walks with my dog in the morning. Needless to say, you don't want to be putting sunflower trays or any warm season stuff, which is all we're starting right now, outside at all for any time during the day. So starting tomorrow morning, I am going to have to start making choices. And what that means is, is my grow lights, all of my racks are slam full. I have moved. I still have our a, a few straggler cool flowers that haven't been planted, like the straw flowers, which hopefully Bobo will be planting them on Monday. Um, but they're outside. They'll take the cold temperatures. They quickly got booted outside um, when this little dilemma started occurring yesterday or the day before. I could see the writing on the wall. So I thought, all right, y'all are out here. Um, and we um, put them outside. So now that made a little extra room, but let me tell you what we're on the verge of. We are on the verge of, so first off, I want to say one of the reasons I don't want to put my sunflower transplants outdoors when it's just too, I mean, I don't think the cold will kill them, but it's not going to help, help them. And they won't build a strong root system that they need the heat to do that. Um, and that's why, you know, when you go to pull them out and I've got a tray here to show you, I might pull one and see what happens. When you have strong roots, you can plant them out even earlier. And so when you start doing these things, sometimes you don't realize what you're undermining and creating problems, right? So I moved the straggler cool flowers outside as of this morning, after me opening the germination chamber and moving stuff off the heat mat, the light space is one at 100% capacity. But guess what is going to be coming out off the heat tomorrow morning, based on what I saw this morning, are all the high dollar celosias, coxcombs, the single stems that are all the really pricey seeds will be coming out or off the heat tomorrow, which means they have to go under growth lights. So I am saying this to not give you a solution other than to say, you have to pay a price for everything. And the price of me starting early sunflowers 
and not really having enough grow space indoors to support them until it's really time to plant them out in the garden is come and do right now. <laughs> so I'll figure out what I'll be doing. So pro I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. I mean, this happens, you know, on a year where spring starts, spring like conditions start happening earlier and kind of hold, which is not unusual for us. I would just be dragging all this extra stuff. And then I start looking. This is too funny. You find you, the the trays of, of seedlings start to learn what their real value is to me. Because I walk in there. I just did it a minute ago. I just stood in there for a minute and looked from tray to tray and thinking, just how important are you to me? <laughs> how significant are you to the bottom line around here to know, all right, so one of the things that I do, this building that I'm sitting in has 50 million big, long fluorescent lights way up high, though. There, I think this is a 12 foot ceiling in here. I have a 10 foot ladder that it's true. It's 12 foot ceiling. So when I start fudging, I will start leaving these lights on 16 hours a day, just like a grow light. And I will, those plant, those transplants that are on the verge of being ready, I will leave in here. I will take them out from under the grow lights. They suffer. Don't get me wrong. But I decide who's rooted well enough, who's nice and vegetatively grown. But you can count on, I will not be fertilizing them. I will not be, I'll give them just enough water to survive. Um, so you can really do a lot of manipulating. So the crisis is, is that the sunflower early birds, if I'd have gone hog wild, starting a ton, knowing that I don't have the space to support them, it would be a much bigger tragedy going on right now. Um, a bigger risk, let's put it that way. So remember, you always have to pay the price um, of doing something new. So with that said, that's kind of my lament on the crisis going on around here. So if you're running out of grow light space, you know, you're preaching to the choir. Everybody has that problem. And that is part of building your skill as a succession planting gardener or flower farmer. I mean, Tucker is literally grazing the ground in here like he's a cow. This dog and I, I mean, this dog pooped two rubber bands this morning. I mean, he eats everything on the floor. Anyway, too much information, I know. But anyway, um, so that is part of building your skill. And that's in every job you have. As a writer, I have to learn how to say more in fewer words. That's because they tell you exactly how many words you can put in your book, right? And how it's doled out. So this is just one more piece of Learning and honing in on your skills is how to make the most out of your heat mat. If you have a germ chamber, um, grow lights, hardening off area, garden space, the whole enchilada, y'all. So I have some seedlings here to show you. Um, and they will, um, I'm going to show them to you. And Tucker's just steadily chewing over here. So I just thought I would show you a few before I'll got some sunflowers, but let me move these um, soil block trays out of the way by showing them to you first. First off, I thought y'all would appreciate seeing some of my eucalyptus that's coming along. This is, um, they're all my favorites, but polyanthemus, um, we sell eucalyptus seeds on our website. And I think two out of the four are in stock right now. I think I haven't looked. Polyanthemus, I believe, is one that is not in stock. Look at those roots. So you can see a little bit of funky stuff starting to grow, is growing on the top. Um, because eucalyptus don't have really aggressive roots, really sucking up the water, it is super easy to grow stuff on the surface of the blocks. And I do a pretty good job of preventing that, but I'm here to tell you, it doesn't kill your plants. The overwatering can cause a problem, but the what it grows beside your plant is not necessarily harmful to your plant. So these guys were started, I think, um, mid-January. And look, here's the whole tray. Um, I have some more in there, but I couldn't fit another tray here on my display area. So these little fellas are coming right along. And I, in fact, wintered over um, some. But I will tell you that last snap last week of 24 degrees took me by surprise. They were covered. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So there's the eucalyptus coming along. And so these were 
started in the small block. Because let me tell you, you do not want to try to start that little seed in the chunk of this big block. Um, <clears throat> and I see Jesse's posting in there which ones are in stock. Um, started in the small block and then we bumped them up to the two inch block once they got a little bigger. And look at this, y'all. This is um, my Rudbeckia Prairie Sun. I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Somebody had asked and they said that theirs had not germinated well. You can see by looking at the side, some of mine germinate. You can see the taller ones germinated first, but the rest of the party joined in. So, you know, we're always trying to learn how late we can plant root, hardy annual rudbeckias to get later blooms because they're very conducive in their look for late summer and fall, but they need 12 hours of light a day to induce flowering. So it's always, I mean, Bobo asked me the other day, do you want to start more? And it's like, no, I mean, you get to a point where it's like you start so many plants and plant them and it doesn't work out that you stop testing quite so much, right? And then look, here are some of ours. I mean, y'all, I bet I have 20 trays like this of different Celosias. This is the gold coxcomb, which is a huge producer for us. On our green trays, which hold 100 of the three quarter inch blocks. And you can see here too, there's a little funky stuff. It happens to all of us, friends. All it takes is one day of me not laying my eye back on the trays to make sure there's no sand and water to dump off that can create that. Um, and in this book business, writing this book and coming in, I, my manuscript deadline is April 1st. Will that happen? We're not sure yet. Um, but book won't be out until February of 2024. We do have the cover. We will be announcing it soon. We have to prepare a lot of stuff to be able to do that. Um, but, and it'll be available to get on our wait list so that you can get an autographed copy and whatever little dreamy resource we come up with. Um, and so here is, and I thought I wanted to show you this. Can you tell this end is drier than this end? This is how I like my blocks to look when I come in in the morning. Um, they These were all fully moistened yesterday morning, but obviously this end did not get as wet as this end. That's why you just sometimes you have to, it's more than just dumping water in y'all. You have to do a little recon um, while you're watering and give yourself 10 minutes to go in. I mean, it takes me about 25 minutes to actually do our big deal here, but um, give yourself, put some soothing tunes on and spend time with your seedlings, looking, watching, checking, and making sure everybody's wet, making sure there's no stand in water. Um, and this is my favorite. Y'all know that my favorite's always the one I'm with, right? But orange is my favorite color. This is Chief Persimmon. Totally love that. We grow all the Celosias by their color because we use so much of it. I don't know if you've ever noticed, this is our drywall. These were leftovers that were going to be composted and we decided to try this last year for a huge success, right? There's no coxcomb in here hardly. That's because we use it all up. We can never have enough. Good quality coxcomb. All right, so now let me show you the sunflowers. Is that all I got? That's all I got. So here is a tray that we started together on March 10th. And looky there, look how beautiful they are. This is the white mix, the gold light, and the peach, which is what we're going to start again today. And, you know, if these had not been under the light or out sitting in bright sunlight in the warmth, they'd have been so totally tall now. Um, so these are the dilemma. Those are the dilemma. And I'll have to look at the weather, whether I set them outside or not. But Oh, I was going to try to pull one. Let me pick one and I'll see if I can't pull it. See, it pulled it apart. Look at those roots, though. And by it being in heat, makes it just send out much more roots so it just pops out. I don't doubt that one will make it, but we'll try. Um, anyway, so that's the dilemma is overstarting too early and then not having the support system. And then if you don't have the support system, you have to have backup plans like what I was sharing earlier, you know, rotating them out onto my porch, 
putting him in this room. I see sunflowers in this bright room like this. They'll get so tall and tangled in a nanosecond. Um, so you have to start. It's like the waste of sunflower seeds, which is a minimal price to pay considering what the, um, I want to go grab, I want to go grab something. So y'all, sorry, the background's not better. Stand by. I want to put that on a, a tray so you can see it better. Stand by. Stay forth. All right, so I'm going to sow our weekly early bird sunflowers. I'm just going to get them up higher so it's easier for y'all to see when I tilt down. There you go. Um, so what's the scoop on early bird sunflowers? We learned a long time ago that sunflower transplants are more cold tolerant than other warm season tender annuals, right? And so that and sunflowers were such a significant cash crop to us that um, I knew it would be beneficial to figure this out. Right. And so I began starting my sunflowers weeks earlier than um, I normally would. Normally, I'd start them like three weeks before our last frost date. They would go out and be planted two and a half to three weeks later um, and they'd be right on the cusp of our last frost. Well, we now target to start planting them even earlier. So the, here's the, the basic way we start them. We start them as you're going to see. Um, they grow in this tray. We put them on heat to start them to get that strong root system that I was mentioning earlier. And they grow, we pop them outdoors. Once it's warm enough, none of this is a problem, right? Um, and you can um, start them, get them all up, cracked, open, and growing, then you can pop them out onto your porch outdoors in full sun all day long, right? Um, so, now what does he need? Come over here and lay down, please. He's worse than a three-year-old kid. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Stay. Um, so, once they get growing, you can put them outside and grow them in their normal conditions with no big deal. But we do put them on a heat mat to get them to pop and to get that strong root system. You know, once you get that root system to pop, that's why we feel like it is so significant to heat, to sprout them. Yes, they'll sprout probably sitting on your floor slowly, but surely, but their root system is not the same. Um, they just aren't as easy to just pull right out of the plug tray. So with that said, so we plant typically um, most of the time pro cuts, pro cuts, are from seed to bloom. That's a series, like a family of sunflowers. Um, pro cuts are from seed to bloom, 55 to 60 days with a little bit of variation depending on the time of year and the day length. And it comes in 13 or 14 different colors. Um, when we were in high production, I only planted one color a week, orange, because the chaos of keeping colors separate would have been a nightmare under that volume of 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers a week. That would have been crazy. So, and guess what I figured out? 1,200 orange sunflowers sold every week and were used in our bouquets. We didn't have to have all the different colors. The different colors are a nice um, offer to have, especially if you have a smaller, more diverse customer base. But we had a big customer base and that spread out over a lot. And it is the orange Pro Cut is the traditional well-known sunflower. Um, and so that's what we grew. But now the way that we do it is I mix the colors up. However, I try even the colors within a family can have a slight difference in the days to bloom. What your goal is, is that you want to plant each week and be harvesting each week. So your timeline will get screwed up if you start changing from variety to variety. Because what I didn't know back in the beginning of time when I started growing and farming is that there are sunflowers that are 40 days to bloom and there are sunflowers that are 130 days to bloom. You got to do your homework, friends. Pro cuts have most of them are strong stems, long lasting, great colors, and they're quick. So that's kind of like my recipe, my punch list for sunflowers. So we start the sunflowers in 
128 plug trays. This is just a mix of any old potting mix and compost, 50-50. I cut it with compost. Not only does it just make it a better soil, but it also cuts the cost. Potting soil is quite expensive. It's one of the most costly parts of um, an operation. And so we're always trying to cut it. Now, I use mask and tape. And our garden marker, this is so funny. My husband, who owns a plumbing company, I've tell you this. Um, um, Stevie told me this morning, he came in and I noticed sitting over where he puts all this stuff, you know, where he empties his pockets, puts his keys and um, all that mess. And he has pen, a couple of a pen that he carries. And I noticed one of these laying and I instantly went over and picked it up. I was going to put it back. I thought he had taken it out of my drawer in the kitchen. He hadn't. Um, he said, you know, when I went into your shop yesterday, um, he had to help us move some pallets. He said, I grabbed this marker because I, you didn't know it, but I grabbed one a couple months ago and I've been using it to write it. I mean, they do all kinds of outdoor work. He said, this is the only pen that he has found that he can write stuff on. They do a lot of sewer pump work that I can write for the guys and it's still there when they go back. Anyway, so plumbers are even now using our garden markers. These are made to withstand UV rays and moisture. And I use them to write on masking tape, which is what I use on my soil blocking trays and my plug trays. Um, and I definitely want my seedlings marked because I need to know which week I've started them from. Um, because you'd be surprised when your seedlings get that two week old, two to three week old window when you start planting them, they are very easy to confuse. Now, which tray is the oldest? Um, so I just simply write on this tape, what is today's date? The 18th. Yesterday was St. Patty's Day. So this week we're starting peach. Um, the peach pro cut is got a peach glow about it, y'all, that is so gorgeous. Now, the other part of starting these early bird suns is to think about what colors do you want blooming with your cool flowers, right? I mean, I'm not starting any of those pro-cut oranges that I just told you about, um, there are which are the ones that I started that all those years ago, back when we were in high production. I'm starting now thinking about the, the timeline of when these guys are going to bloom, I'm starting those colors that'll be awesome with spring flowers. What better than peach, gold light. Gold light is um, the traditional gold petals with a chartreuse green center. Y'all, it looks just like a Gerber daisy. People, when you plant it and at the proper spacing that we do, um, that makes your blooms. This is the size sunflowers you're shooting for. None of that big stuff. You want the small ones, right? Um, people think they're Gerber daisies. They don't even recognize them as sunflowers. And then the last one that we're starting is our Pro Cut White Mix. We mix these in-house. It's the white light and the white night. So you get both the chocolate center with, with that ivory, those Oh my goodness, the ivory petals with the chocolate center are gorgeous, as well as the ivory scent, ivory petals with the gold center with the chartreuse. I mean, you can't go wrong. And again, people, which one am I looking for? Peach. So, um, and if there's any left in stock over in the app, we put together a sunflower succession collection. There are six packs of 200 seed jumbo seeds um, of those sunflowers that I plant over and over again. Um, that is, I forget how much they are. I'm not even going to say, but it's a discount than buying them individually. Right. And I have to tell you that I know you can't see this. The peach seeds are, are black and white, you know, that white stripe, but the white almost looks peach. I mean, it's like, it's, it's almost like it's colored. Um, so you can tell them. So I am just simply, let me put you down here so you can watch me. I am just dropping a sunflower onto the surface of each cell. And there's only one seed per cell. And let's see, how many are we going to do? We're going to do the most of peach because 
I always say it's my favorite, but peach is pretty dadgum awesome. All right, so peach is done. And friends, if you're a flower farmer, this is such a quick and easy job to do. I mean, obviously you wouldn't be talking the whole time like I am here, which definitely slows me down. Um, but you need to make this a priority job. You can float a bouquet business. This is the gold light. This is the gold petals with the chartreuse green center. And you'll notice normally for my weekly sunflowers as a small grower, I would be doing three trays, but I'm not doing three trays for these early birds. I'm doing one tray because there's risk, right? Um, and so let me finish talking about that before I forget. So the early bird deal is that these sunflowers are then planted outside in the garden and they're immediately hooped and covered with lightweight row cover. Good boy, you have been a good dog. Um, they're immediately covered and that gives them enough protection that it concentrates the heat and really gets them started um, growing out there. We have sunflowers for Mother's Day on most years that we've done this, if, you know, the weather cooperates. <coughs> All right, one more row. Um, and I will tell you just a little bit of the rest of the planting process for you to um, know it if you're new here and don't know. Oh, did the wrong one here. Um, so we plant sunflowers differently in our garden than I do almost all my other annual plants because we plant so many of them so often. But in addition to that, they grow there. I mean, when we plant these guys, remember, they're 60 days from seed to bloom. Well, we're planting them when they're basically 20 days old, right? So that means a third of their life is already um, done. So they only have like 40 days left in the garden. So we do not waste the resources or the labor time to put down the Bio360 film, which I would not even consider doing that um, with a, a crop that was going to stay longer in the garden, particularly in the summer. Um, so no film. We prepare the bed by adding in um, our dry organic chicken-based fertilizer, which you can find that on our website to get all the details on that or purchase it. And then um, we plant in our 30 inch wide raised bed, we plant five rows across. So they're basically six inches apart and then six inches apart in the row. We use our flower support netting. Bobo lays that down on the bed and it gives her the perfect spacing. So now I'm just going to take my fingers and push these about halfway down into the cell. So Bobo plants them at that planting. Then she waters them in by hand with a hose and a wand sprayer. And we do not install irrigation or netting for all the reasons that I've already mentioned. It's just too many of them and too much um, labor. We get 52 inches of rain a season here. If you live in a drought prone area that doesn't get regular rain, then obviously you need to either put in irrigation or you're going to have to water them. But sunflowers are fairly um, drought tolerant, but definitely watering them will move them along faster. And, um, you know, so you'll have to be the judge of that. All right. So I'm pushing these in. And so then what's going to happen next? So what's going to happen next is I'll take this tray into the grow room. I'll put it in the floor because I have a floor drain. You can take Bobo often. Would, she would have taken it outside and watered it. We use a watering can with a sprinkler head on it. Water this tray thoroughly. If you think you're finished watering, I would recommend you put your finger down and dig around in one of the cells and make sure it's really wet all the way through. Um, sorry, y'all. My phone is on do not disturb. 
but it still comes through. We have definitely got to investigate that. That happened to me yesterday. Um, so you can, I think I'm actually gonna just turn the volume down. That person's gonna call back, I can tell you. Um, so you can, um, sorry y'all. Oh, so Bobo would take it outside and water it. I water it in the floor of my grow room, but just be certain that it's as watered as you think it is, right? Then we pop it onto a seedling heat mat. It gets watered every single morning. Um, I take them off the heat mat, put them on the floor and give them a good dousing um, and put them back on the heat. Once 50% of them show necks of cracking <coughs> or are up, they move from the heat over to a grow light. If it was the heat of summer, I would just pop them right straight outside into the heat of summer and water them. If you have varmint pressure, then you need to make provisions for that. When I say varmints, I mean rabbits will come up on our porch and eat a whole tray gone. Birds, cardinals are the biggest. Our state bird, those little rascals, will pull the plants out looking for the seed at the bottom. Um, so you have to make provisions for that and provide protection. You can use row covers. Um, people do all kinds of crazy things. And then we plant them out in the garden into those prepared beds um, that we've prepared with dry organic fertilizer. We plant five rows to a 30 inch bed, six inches apart in the row. Um, we hand water them in. That way we know every plant got a really good drink. They're well watered before we plant them. They get no additional fertilizer. They, there's fertilizer in the soil they were just planted into. We do not lay irrigation and we do not net them. I mean, just the, the, the weekly planting and unplanting of these beds prevents that from happening. And I know that that is the same as early bird sunflowers. There's calculated risks in not using netting or irrigation. But we have learned we have far more successes than we do failures or problems. So it's worth doing it that way. You know, that's one of the things that is really, really hard, particularly if you are a perfection focused person and anybody that never can get all the pieces together to do a job. You may not know it, but that's really what your problem is. I've learned that the hard way because I'm like at the head of that line. Um, you don't have, you have to start making, when you go in business, you can do whatever you want when you're a home gardener. You can do whatever you want when you're in business, but to be a successful, efficient, profitable grower, you have to start doing triage and figuring out, okay, if we don't net the sunflowers, um, then we may lose some or even possibly all. Um, but how many, how long is it going to take for somebody to make the bed with Bio 360, to lay the irrigation, which that would all happen at once for us with the tractor. But then to net them, which takes time, and then they have to be unnetted after they're done being harvested. That's got to be removed. The irrigation pulled up before the bed can be flipped. I mean, you start adding up the time, all of a sudden the risk is not as nearly as high as you thought it was. I mean, these are the things you have to do. And sometimes it comes back to bite you. But you want to know one thing I have learned, that even when sunflowers are well netted, if a really big weather event comes that takes down some of the sunflowers, it even takes down the ones that are netted because netted, because sunflowers are big and heavy. Um, so if you do net sunflowers, which I read, the smaller the grower you are, the more important it is to net because you can't afford to lose flowers. Um, so if I was a small grower, and I was planting 128, which is one plug tray a week, I would probably net. I would probably, um, and so I've talked about this in so many different places. Um, what I would do is either make a bed with Bio 360 and start planting at the head, net the entire bed, and then you can just plant easily under the netting for the additional plantings. The Bio 360 helps to prevent weeds from sprouting, or you can make your bed without Bio, put a silage tarp down on it, fold back when you plant the front and then continue it to fold back as they grow. Um, but then netting becomes a problem if you do silage tarp. See y'all, it's all back to that. You pay a price for everything. You have to figure these things out. So my solution is we don't net sunflowers anymore. We used to. 
but they're very important. If you have a bouquet making business, like we did supermarkets, farmers markets, bouquet subscriptions, and at our members only market, our bouquets, we needed a lot of flowers each week. That's what started me growing so many sunflowers because you can poof up, especially if you have small sunflowers, this dog, especially if you have the small, correct size sunflowers, they're in high demand and you're going to be demanding them to poof up your, your bouquets. That's why I recommend small growers, perhaps mix up the colors a little bit more so that you have more diversity. So if you have a week where all of a sudden there are, there are no zinnias, there's no marigolds, there's no coxcomb um, or very little, you can put in five sunflowers into your bouquet. And if you have a couple of different colors, Nobody is no more the aware that you're short of flowers. That's what started me growing. And this is, I'll take a look at a couple questions. Um, Jesse, I'm going to ask you if you would peruse the questions um, that would be a good one for me to answer. If you would put it up on the screen, if you're still there, that would be awesome. Um, so what really pushed me to start growing um, sunflowers was when we committed to 250 mixed bouquets a week to supermarket chains, in addition to doing farmers one farmer's market on Saturday and our members only market and our bouquet subscriptions. Oh my gosh, how many days did Suzanne on a Thursday night at nine o'clock, I'm telling you, it was dark outside, sending me outside to say, there's got to be more flowers out there. We still have to make the last 50 bouquets and we need more flowers. And that's when I learned about sunflowers and it, it took 60 days to get our first ones up, right? But it changed our life. Do not underestimate the power of sunflowers as I find, and Dave Dowling confirms this, we find the most of growers that are growing um, any kind of volume of anything are missing out on. All right. Good morning, Laura. Any tips on how to begin selling to florists? No idea how to go about it. Scary. It is scary. So Laura, um, and you know, I don't do not think that I have said this publicly, um, but I'm going to say it here, Laura, because I think it'll benefit you. Um, we did announce in our newsletter two or three weeks ago that my Flower Farm and School online course, the basics, marketing, um, annuals, marketing, and more, is going on demand. That means it's going on sale in just a few weeks and it'll be available all the time. And the reason I'm saying this to you, Laura, is because what I don't want you to do is to burn your bridge with a florist by going in there and not being a professional. Um, one of the things that I talk about in the course, I am, I, I came at starting a business after I was a business manager at a very successful, very busy um, veterinary hospital. And one of the things I learned at that hospital and then marrying a man that owned a big company was how the level of professionalism that you exhibit as a business owner is what makes or breaks your business. I don't care if you got the best flowers in town. If you are not a professional and appear, and you can appear professional not knowing anything, um, it just burns your bridges to go into a florist unprepared as a pro just really might make it that, you know, first impressions are everything, right? So I'm saying to you, Laura, I'm going to give you what my tips are, but my course will be coming out soon. And that is like um, one of the whole sessions or one whole um, class, which is many, many sessions is about selling your flowers and going about that. So the first thing you want to do is even though you might not know a thing yet, hardly, you are not going to give off that persona when you go into a florist. You are going to go in there as a professional grower. And what that means is you don't go in there and ask them what you should grow and how much you should charge. You're going to have all that established before you go in there. And you do that by learning from um, people that have been doing it successfully. And so if you decide that you don't want to take a course to learn from people that have done it, 
then my number one recommendation would be to join the ASCFG. That's the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers, which you need to do anyway. That is where you can ask other seasoned professionals um, that have been doing it and know, um, have experience um, where you can ask questions and also to establish your pricing. Um, and that's the other thing that we help you with in the course is I don't tell you how much to charge for your flowers, but I tell you where to go to find out for your region how to establish your um, um pricing for your region. Because let me tell you, I live in the second largest metropolitan area in the state of Virginia, second to the Washington, D.C. Um, suburb, right? And so I live in a high demand area. And so my pricing is not going to be the same for somebody that's in Nebraska in a rural situation. So you have to be able to know where to find yours. So what I recommend to people is when you go in to make contact with your florist, first off, I scoped out my florist. Um, I fortunately went in there, maybe go in there and order something, go in there and shop a little bit. A lot of them sell gifty stuff and just kind of observe and try to see what's going on. First time I went in, I took generous samples to give them, armload of samples to give them that were great, great quality, that were conditioned properly. I handed them my price list and said, you're going to hear from me every Tuesday morning. I'm going to send you a list of what's available, how much, what color, um, and when I'll be delivering them. And I'll call, follow it up with a call. Um, and they all of a sudden know, you know, when you hand them a price list and present it that way, there is none of this. It costs this much. You can believe they don't say that to the wholesalers. So being a pro will build your confidence 28 steps higher than where you are right now and takes away. You'll still be nervous, but you won't be scared. Um, so Lisa, how do you pinch sweet peas? So I don't always pinch my sweet peas, but you surely can. Ours tend to branch. We start our sweet peas in two inch blocks um, and plant them out when they're two to three weeks old and they typically branch themselves. However, if you are not experienced branching or you want to encourage it earlier, you can cut that cent central vine down to right above the bottom three or four little leaf side shoots where you make the pinch is where it's actually going to um the new sprouts are going to come from. And um, our sweet peas, this is not the best sweet pea year that I've ever had. And it was 100%. Um, I'll take one more question, Jesse, if you want to find one for me. Um, it was 100% operator error. I planted our sweet peas. Um, I usually install the trellis like about now. So that means that I can provide cover for the sweet pea vines, because we plant them in the fall, um, give them cover when they need it. And then, of course, we have that polar blast that we had. Anyway, um, we've got sweet peas coming, but we don't have the volume that I had hoped for because of my error and see friends, even 25 years in. I tried something new and it didn't work out. And, you know, you just have to have a backup plan. Karen, hi, so glad to make a live. Can sunflower seedlings be planted just slightly deeper when putting out in your rows if they are a little leggy? You can. I mean, it won't smother them. You know, you always want to be careful not to plant stuff too deep. Um, but Bobo definitely, um, probably, I mean, we still have a good volume of the stem above ground. So you want to have about a quarter to a half an inch of soil on top of the cell soil surface, if that makes sense, you know, because when we pop them out, when they're ready, they pop right out. The whole mass is there. They're quick and fast to plant. You should not have to be digging the transplants out of these cell packs. Um, that is, um, oh, thank you, Chris. Um, that is why you want to do everything you can to encourage a super strong root system. Not only is it better plant, but it makes planting them much more efficient and much quicker. All right, friends. So until we meet again, I'm going to sign off. Remember to check out our app. If um, there's a special on the soil blocking kit over there, 10% um, off, I think it is. And <clears throat> the shipping is only $9.95 is part of the special, which is a little bit more normally because it costs us more than that to ship it to you. Um, and 
I think that's all I have to say. And then I'll see you. Remember, we're having guest people on Ask a Flower Farmer every Wednesday on Instagram. Um, and check that out. I'll see you Wednesday for our express shopping show in the app, two o'clock on Wednesday, again on Friday. And then I'll see you here next Saturday um, after um, for our seed starting Saturday. All right, friends, we'll go see what my dog is eating now. Ciao.